G'day guys, we finally have the balanced data slate in our hand for the first quarter of 2024 and the two armies that we talk about most on this channel, namely World Eaters and Chaos Space Marines, copped some really heavy blows in that balance update. We took some heavy hits, but I'm here to tell you that it's not all doom and gloom and I'm going to give you a unique perspective on how to look at these balanced data slates, how to look at these updates and hopefully inspire some optimism when it comes to list writing with these new points and these new rules changes. So with that being said, let's get into my thoughts specifically on the world eaters in this balanced data slate. All right, first, let's look at what changed in this balanced data slate. The first thing you'll notice is that eight bound of both varieties went up 10 points per unit of three, which is a blow to one of the best units in the faction. The other thing that went up was Khan the Betrayer. He went up from 80 points to 100, which is a pretty significant leap for a single model. And then we have the Master of Executions, which also went up from 80 points to 100. And further to this, the Berserker Glaive, which was a common enhancement that was given to the Master of Execution, it also went from granting plus D3 attacks and plus D3 damage to just granting one when it makes charge moves, which is a massive blow to the effectiveness of this enhancement. Also, the Favoured of Corn enhancement, which is also often given to a Master of Executions, has now been changed to only be able to use once per battle, as opposed to its previous version, which was once per battle round. Not all points changes were in the negative direction though. We had some units go down. The Lord of Skulls went down 30 points to a very attractive new price point, And the Forge Fiend went down 25 points, making it also a much more attractive pick in a World Eaters army. There were also a couple of changes where, for example, Demon Allies now require battle line units. So no more adding just Flesh Hounds to your army or just some Blood Crushers. Now going forward, you're going to have to add blood letters which is a significant tax and also the demon prince's aura now only grants a five up invulnerable save to berserkers and jackals and then a four up invulnerable save to things like eight bound and exalted eight bound so that's a bit of a nerf on the demon prince and a bit of a nerf on the demon allies as well all right now that we've covered off all of those changes let's take a look at my list from the australian itc championships where i did quite well and i had some pretty significant results with it let's have a look at how that would have changed now essentially all of the changes that are going to impact it include the points cost changes the favorite of corn only being able to be used once per battle and the berserkers glaive no longer gaining the plus d3 attacks right and the plus d3 damage it's now going to just one attack and one damage now all of those things are actually very manageable with very minor changes to my list. So for example, all I have to do is drop Khan the Betrayer and my list fits with no other changes whatsoever. And when looking back on the eight games that I played at the Australian ITC Championships and looking back at what Khan did, I think I would still win all of the games that I won and I would still lose the games that I lost. So. I think losing Khan is not actually as big of a problem as you might think. You could also, instead of losing Khan, you could lose the Rhino, or you could lose the Jackals, or you could shuffle things around a little bit, but generally when one of these balanced data slates lands in my lap, what I like to do is take my previous list and make as few changes as possible to that list and see if it still works. So the points costs means I lose Khan, that's probably where I would go, and that's actually not that big of a deal, as far as I'm concerned. The other area where the changes affect me is the Berserker's Glaive going from plus D3 attacks and D3 damage down to plus one attack and one damage. And again, I don't think this is gonna cost me any of the games that I won. And I also don't think it's necessarily gonna result in me losing harder in any of the games that I already lost. So I think Often when I was using him, I wasn't going into anything particularly high damage required. So I was going into smaller elite infantry and those sorts of things. 
So him going down to only plus one damage and plus one attack isn't that big of a deal. And the few times when I did send him into something big, I rolled a one on the D3 anyway. For example, when I went into Mortarian against the Death Guard player, I rolled a one anyway. So whilst it is unfortunate that that change has occurred and it does limit his capacity to deal with certain things, I think overall, it's actually not that big of a deal. Then the next change was the Favourite of Corn. Now this one's arguably one of the biggest impacts on my list because I was using the Favourite of Corn Relic pretty regularly. However, it didn't really matter that much because often if you're using it in the perspective of trying to resurrect Angron more reliably, there's only going to be one or two times when you're making that Blessings of Corn roll that you're going to want to reroll it because before Angron dies, it doesn't really matter. And getting him back in turn five doesn't really matter because he's not going to be able to impact much of the game. So really there is a short window where these rerolls are critical. And because you can still do it once per battle, you can still do it in that short window. So I don't think this is as big of a deal as everybody else is making it out to be. And further to that, this enhancement got cheaper. So I think this is still very much something that you want to take in your lists. It just now is going to require a little bit of skill to use. Instead of just always rerolling it, you're going to make sure that you're only rerolling it on that key turn. You're going to wait for Angron to die. Then you're going to use your blessings. You're going to reroll it. And then in your fight phase, you're going to spend a CP, kill something, and make another roll. So you get three opportunities at it. If you've got Berserkers and Jackals sitting on objectives, or if you've got one of the new and improved Lord of Skulls going around blasting things, the probability of getting Angron back is still very, very high if you time all of those things to happen at the right time. So that's more or less my thoughts on the World Leaders uptake. So yes, 8-bound got a bit more expensive, but to be honest, I think they were almost criminally cheap the way they were. They were very, very powerful units. And yes, the, the Favourite of Corn enhancement is not as spammable as it previously was, but you're generally only going to need that one turn to use it. And yes, the Master of Executions Berserker's Glaive is no longer going to be toppling Magnus in a single fight phase, but realistically, should he have ever been... Is it possible that was a little ridiculous? I think it is, and I think he's fine without it. You're still going to be able to use Angron to take down those big targets. There is a world where you chop up the list and instead of taking the double Master of Executions in two 10 Berserkers, you may be looking to taking one Master of Executions, one unit of 10 Berserkers, and then using those points to access a Lord of Skulls, which is probably the direction I'll be taking the list. But overall, I think World Leaders came out pretty good as a faction. Now, there's one really important thing to note, and I will leave you with this point, is that a lot of people, when a balanced data slate hits, they just look at their faction, they just look at the changes that happen to them, and they get really upset. But it's worth noting, a lot of other factions, particularly the factions that used to be a real problem for us, also copped significant nerfs. So, for example, Eldar got eviscerated. Sisters of Battle copped some nerfs. Um, Tau copped some nerfs. You know, like, the... Um, Death Guard copped some nerfs. There's tons, Votan copped tons of nerfs. And mainly, Chaos Space Marines copped tons of nerfs. And Chaos Space Marines were always a real big problem for World Leaders because they hit like us in melee. They have the speed that we did, but they also had those Forge Fiends, which were a real problem for World Leaders very specifically because they eviscerated 8 bound and they could nuke a unit of 10 Corn Berserkers in a single volley. Now that we're going to see probably Forge Fiends gone out of the meta, CSM Chosen, probably gone out of the meta, that really opens up a space for World Eaters to do something unique and deadly. So I think World Eaters are fine. I think there's going to be a lot of people abandoning the World Eaters because of these data slate changes. And to that, I say, ta mate, see you later. We're going to keep playing World Eaters, and you and I are going to crush it with World Eaters because I think they still have immense power. So with that being said, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for tuning in. These are my initial thoughts on the balanced data slate. These are all obviously subject to change as the meta evolves and develops, but all things considered, I think we came out in a fantastic position to continue crushing it on the table. Thanks for tuning in guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. The Warhammer community suffers from some of the most prohibitively expensive essentials in the world, especially Australian content creators. Every single day, Dean wants to create content, but he can't. Suffering from old, worn-out brushes, expensive model kits, and costly software and equipment, 
he can't endure much longer. Just look at this dirty paint water. Would you drink this? Would you let your child? Even a small monthly donation can help provide Dean with clean paint water, basic tools for survival, and access to life-saving information and education. So please, follow the links in the description below and find out how you can sponsor a mad cunt like Dean today and end the suffering. Suffering that is cruel, unsustainable, and your fault.